Uh, Thomas, the floor is yours. Here mm -hmm. are your slides and talk to you soon. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to this keynote about explainable AI and power generation and distribution. Thank you all for joining. So in the next 15 minutes, I'm going to give you an overview of explainable AI with many examples and talk about some of our lessons learned. In the afternoon, there will also be a workshop uh, on the topic with live demonstrations of real use cases. Yeah, but first, who am I? I'm Thomas Mühlbacher, uh, co-founder and CTO of Visplore. We are a VC-backed spin-off from the research center VRVIS in Vienna. And we're experts for visual analytics software in power generation and distribution. My personal background is in human-centered analytics, where we've done many years of applied research um, with uh, industry companies like Austrian Power Grid, for example. And I also did my PhD thesis in uh, the field in human-oriented statistical modeling. So explainable AI has accompanied me for some years. All right, without further ado, let's dig into the topic. What is explainable AI? Well, it's AI in which the results of an algorithm can be understood by humans. For example, with explainable AI, humans can understand why an AI takes a certain decision. Maybe even how does the model look like? What assumptions does the model make? And when does it perform well or perform badly? As a very simple example, look at this decision tree here on the right for predicting if a person belongs to a certain category. The decision rules of this model make very clear why the model takes a certain decision. And you can even visualize how the model looks and how certain a decision is. So it's about transparency, interpretability, explainability. These are just some of the benefits of using such models instead of deep neural networks, for example. Now consider a more realistic example from the energy sector. Here we have a prediction of the natural gas consumption in a city in orange and the measured gas consumption in black. If you only have the prediction like this, it's a black box. But with explainable AI, you can understand how this model works. The prediction model here is actually a four-dimensional regression model with four inputs. But how can we make this transparent? How can we visualize a four-dimensional model? Here is one way. You see the four input variables from the left to the right. Temperature, wind speed, day of week, and time of day expressed as the hour. These are the inputs of this model. And on the y-axis here, you see the gas consumption. This is the target variable that this model predicts. The visualization now tells you what the model predicts when you have certain values for the inputs. Currently, we are looking at the situation of zero degrees temperature, wind speed of three meters per second on a Monday at 2 a.m. in the morning. And for this particular situation, the predicted gas consumption is 86,000 units approximately. The graphs here show you what would happen if one parameter was different. For example, if just the temperature was a bit warmer, the gas consumption would be lower. This is what you see here. And the steep slope of this graph here also tells you that a slight change of the temperature makes much more difference than, for example, a slight change of the wind speed or a day of the week. So temperature is more relevant for gas consumption than wind. And this kind of information is important for building trust in the models because the domain experts can tell if this matches their expectations. And with such a tool, you can also do a what if analysis. For example, if I change the temperature from zero to around 10 degrees, how does it depend on the other factors then? For example, the daily profile here on the right is le less pronounced in this case. Or what if the time of day was different? And so on. Also, you can validate the model together with actual data records. So every point here is an observed data record to see if a parameter combination is actually realistic. 
For example, strong wind speeds like this one were not so common. You don't see so many points anymore. And this tells you that the confidence of the prediction is not so high in this case. And again, this is important information for building trust. And we just heard in a previous talk by Peter Baumgartl how important feature selection is. And that understanding the input of features or the impact of features is typically not straightforward. And this just helps in this case. All right, so that was an example of explainable AI. Now, if you take a look at a typical AI project, um, this interpretation of predictions is actually quite late in the life cycle, mainly after deploying the solution. But human input is not only relevant then, but actually throughout the entire life cycle of an AI project. In the beginning, for example, only humans can formulate the business problem and assess if the available data is suitable to achieve the project goals. Data understanding and preparation are very time consuming parts of the project and only humans can assess which parts of the data can actually be used. Maybe some parts of the data are not relevant anymore, and an AI wouldn't know this. During modeling, only humans know the application context of the modeling and can make the right trade-offs between maximum accuracy or a simpler model that can be interpreted. And during evaluations, humans need to assess if the solution is already good enough. For all of these things, humans need to be in the loop and are actually key for success of the project. Let me illustrate this with some real world examples. The first one is about involving humans in the data preparation and modeling phase of an explainable AI project. And it is from Verbund, Austria's largest hydropower provider. It is about condition-based monitoring for a turbine. The turbine is an important asset and monitoring its health is critical. There is a sensor for the oil temperature in this turbine and the plant experts wanted to define a dynamic tolerance corridor to generate early warnings when this oil temperature doesn't behave normally. So we have to model this normal expected oil temperature. And here we see four years of this oil temperature measurements. The challenge is Direct modeling is not possible here because large part of this data actually don't refer to normal operation. For example, there was a maintenance period here. There were shutdowns and ramp ups of the turbine. This is also not the normal state that we want to model. And also after the maintenance, the normal operation was different, meaning the blue part is not relevant anymore. And all this knowledge is only known to the domain experts. With this knowledge, they were able to select only the green parts for training the model. Now, when you select only the green points, we can start modeling it. The water temperature is a good input variable here. And together with other variables, it was possible to train an explainable model like we saw in the beginning. So here, for example, you see again how changes impact this model. In the afternoon session, I will actually perform the data selection and the modeling live in a demo. But the message here is, this is a nice example that the explainable model is just a part of the whole story. Without domain experts carefully selecting the relevant data, modeling would not have been possible here. All right, moving on to a second real world example. This one involves humans in the evaluation phase of models. And it's about forecast validation and diagnostics. One big challenge for asset managers is the exploding number of prediction models they have to maintain with decentralization, renewables, metering of customers, and just the possibilities of AI. The number of models is growing and growing. And the challenge is to validate all these models regularly. Sometimes models need to be recalibrated for example, if the consumer landscape has changed or other structural breaks, as we've heard before. But from hundreds or even thousands of models, how can you quickly find out where action is needed and what action is needed to improve these models? And this use case is just about that. The approach was like this. Here you see a list of the models. The prediction error of the top ranking one 
has gone up by 29% recently. So what was going on here? Inspecting this reveals a drift of the prediction starting in October. You see how the predictions and measured values drift apart here. And for diagnosing the errors, an algorithm can search for relevant variables to explain the errors. Here, large errors have happened during large temperatures or high temperatures, indicated in red here. More details on that I will show in the afternoon session, but the key message here is this. Even though the models may be black box, which is the case here, it is possible to make transparent why errors occur. And this is key information for improving the models. All right. And a final example refers to data understanding and preparation driven by humans. And it is from Energie Baden-Württemberg. It is about optimizing the ramp up procedures of a coal power plant. Ramp up means that the power production is increased or ramped up to a higher level by the operators of the plant. And why is this done? Well, with the increasing share of renewables and more dynamic grids in general, it's often necessary to redispatch power production, for example, by ramping up a coal plant. And here you see some ramp up events. You see by burning some uh, coal and gas, the production is ramped up to the higher level. Ideally, this is done by not using more fuel than necessary, especially gas. The problem is such power plants are highly complex and have a lot of interdependencies. Some constraints are imposed by authorities and so on. So optimizing this needs a lot of care and manual work by the domain experts, like labeling the ramp ups, inspecting them, comparing KPIs. So in this use case, the human is not just in the loop, but actually in the driver's seat. But good news, even for such cases, we can use explainable algorithms to assist the human task. I will show this in detail in the afternoon, but here is a teaser. The user selects one ramp up example, and then similar patterns are searched automatically, like these five ramp ups here. Now the question is, what is similar enough? And this interface here supports the user in selecting the right threshold. So the algorithm assists and guides the segmentation of this data. And then the user can overlay all of these ramp ups, compute KPIs and so on. I will show more analysis of this in the workshop. For now, let's shortcut to the results. For the first time here, the domain experts can do such kind of analysis and they have generated ideas for optimization within a few hours. For example, here, some ramp ups were identified that consumed a lot of gas, but resulted only in a smaller power increase, the orange ones here. In other words, these orange ramp ups were less efficient than the blue ones. And the experts can follow up on this. Also, the segmentation approach here gives them massive time savings for the quarterly reports of the ramp up efficiency, which were manual really so far. All right, again, more information about these use cases and live demos will be the focus of the afternoon workshop at 3 p.m. If you're interested, please join. Um, the link is in B2Match. Finally, here, I want to give a few words about Visplore. So this is our software. Um, it's a plug and play software for self-service analytics. You can do data exploration and preparation in much less time. And it is really tailored to questions of the energy sector, our generation distribution. And it integrates directly with databases, Python, and many other sources. It's in use by leading companies worldwide. Here are just a few examples. And if you'd like to try this out uh, or see a live demo, just contact us. Finally, I want to draw a few conclusions, and I'm almost done. First, we have seen that explainable AI is not an island, but actually a process. Um, Domain experts don't just interpret the results in the end, but they play a key role from the beginning of such a project until the end. The benefit of having humans in the loop can be a solution that is more trusted and backed by the domain experts who have to use it. And finally, some problems might not be ready for AI even today because they require so much experience and domain background. In this case, you have human-driven workflows. 
But we have seen that bringing algorithms into the loop can make such workflows much more efficient to guide the users and to freedom of the most time consuming parts. And with this, I would like to invite you once more to our afternoon workshop. For now, yeah, thank you very much. And I'm happy to take any questions. Yeah, Thomas, thanks a lot for also providing a keynote today. And how to say, not, not just a workshop in the afternoon. We actually received a couple of questions, but uh, let's filter out those which are which are, are a better match to the keynote and not to the, to the after, afternoon session. So that the first one is the question on your business model. It's asking if you charge per seat or if there is any other metric like consumption based. Yeah, excellent question. Actually, so we have um, subscription based licenses that can be licensed per concurrent seat. Yes, that's possible. It's also possible to have personal licenses that are bound to a natural person. And uh, yes, these licenses are, are available for our products. Perfect. Then for the, for the second question, perhaps you would like to take over, Ahmad. Yes, sure. So from your point of view, what are the two main challenges of rolling out prediction models like this across the energy sector? Mm -hmm. So what are the two main challenges for rolling out prediction models in energy sector, very clear? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think uh, on one hand, if you mean prediction models like this, you mean explainables especially. Yeah. Um, I would say that um, in general, it's, it's a bit mixed how people are reluctant or embracing the user involvement in the first place. So we've seen that often um, there's a desire to have fully automatic uh, models employed and deployed and so on. But we've also seen an increasing interest in having these explainable um, models because of the benefits that I mentioned. And uh, so it kind of depends if, 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 if uh, the company or the digitization strategy uh, wants to have uh, uh, human involvement in this process, especially if you have a lot, a lot of such um, uh, prediction targets, as I have mentioned before. Other challenges typically are, of course, also, um, yeah, let's say data quality topics, for example. So you need a really good databases to uh, consolidate it and everything to, to do the automation. That's not specific to the energy sector, but in general, um, one issue. Um, and another thing, I mean, yes, this, this is also, this fits nicely to the things that were said before. Um, the changes of the market and of the, of the situations like structural breaks that were mentioned before, staying up to date with the models is also really a challenge. Yeah? That, that, that whenever the situation changes, you have to update things to keep uh, on top of things. These things I think would be some, right. some challenges here. Thank you very much. So a question from my side, uh, if, if I allow. So we usually hear or see in some reports explainability versus performance. What is your view on that? Explainability versus performance? Yeah, so the more complex models, the less explainability you have, mm -hmm. So which means probably the less performance or the less accuracy. And I would like from you, because you actually have mm -hmm. explainable AI product, I would like to hear from you what is your view on that? Mm -hmm. That's a great question. So actually, this is a big trade-off, basically. And it depends on the application that you're working on here, on the application context, let's say. I would say whenever humans are involved here, and also with the decision-making or the use of the models in the end, it may be worth to have the models more on the explainable side, because it just helps the people who are working with it yeah, to build trust and so on, to, to, to stand the ground for decisions that were made by the model in the end. Mm -hmm. Especially if, the, if the, um, the problem that the model is addressing is based on a lot of experience and domain knowledge and these things, and it's not completely well-defined. So some, some human has to um, do judgments in addition to this. If, however, you have a problem that is extremely well-defined, yeah? That is um, almost laboratory conditions um, and only the accuracy matters, then of course, why not aim for maximum accuracy and use the model that just gives you the highest accuracy? 
So it really depends on how, uh, what are the requirements that you have, and these may be different from project to project. Yeah? And supporting users in making these trade-offs is actually also uh, a very uh, important and interesting um, aspect where tool support can help, actually. Great. Thank you very Answer? much. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And yeah, as mentioned before, if you want to interact closer with Thomas, just head over to P2Match and apply for the workshop. I, I just checked and there are already more than 40 uh, people have registered for the workshop. So let's see if we can get them to the triple digit numbers. So thanks a lot. And yeah, see you soon.